well, so I'm going to keep this pretty brief. Um, as you've heard, the OMB has rejected uh, most of the planning work put forward by Active 18 and the city, admittedly late to the party and with exceedingly modest goals. Um, this situation has revealed and underlined a deep flaw in our system, and that, that's what I want to talk about. It's difficult to imagine that anything more could have been done by Active 18 uh, in terms of being proactive and positive. This is a community that welcomed and understood the need and opportunity for growth. Uh, this is a community that defined itself as yes in my backyard and consistently supported reasonable development in the Triangle area. Um, through paid work, hundreds of hours of volunteer time, the community charrette that was described, uh, the participation of many noted professionals. Uh, there was a real outreach made here uh, to both the developers and the city. What Active 18 was asking for was eminently reasonable, a coherent community plan to treat this area as an extension of an existing neighborhood with services, public realm, workable circulation, to protect a key existing building, 48 Able, which we heard about, uh, which played an incredibly important role and with its position and role could have set up the entire plan uh, to respect the scale and quality of Queen Street, a simple thing like sunlight on one sidewalk on this key portion of Queen Street, uh, which has implications for the entire length of Queen West, uh, to ensure affordable live workspace for artists, a critical need and opportunity, uh, not only from a planning, but from the city's economic development perspective, uh, to provide park space, uh, clearly there's a great need in the existing neighborhood and with all these additional people, um, even more so, and not just an amount of space, but in a form that makes sense with connections to surrounding neighborhoods. And to have some minimal requirement for quality of design. Yet none of this was delivered and even the reasons for seeking these modest objectives uh, were rejected. What we are getting instead is not a plan for building a significant new piece of city. This, ladies and gentlemen, is not a plan. What this is, is an accidental byproduct of three decisions which are going to produce an incoherent jumble of high-rise condominium and apartment of a three city block triangular area with no meaningful streets and blocks. And let's not forget, these are essentially landlocked industrial sites that are being recycled. Minimal public space and linkages and little or no acknowledgement of the special quality of this neighborhood. Something is clearly broken here. Um, with all due respect to Councillor Jambroni in terms of whatever accomplishments there might be, how low do our expectations have to be? Who is in charge of city planning? How did this process fail so abysmally, both at the city level and before the OMB? And what are the ramifications for the rest of the city? Clearly, this virtually complete failure of the planning process is a warning to many neighborhoods facing similar situations. Much, but not all, has been said of the failure, in my view, points back to the OMB itself. And if any good can come out of this, it may be to fundamentally question the role of the OMB as an institution. Whatever its origins or original purposes, it has probably outlived its usefulness. And you may know it was founded in 1897 as an adjunct to the provincial auditor. In 1906, it was given responsibility for railways. And in 1932, it was renamed the Ontario Municipal Board. And now it has taken over um, as an appointed, not elected body, um, virtually everything to do with planning in the province. Official plans, zoning bylaws, subdivision plans, consents, minor variances, land compensation, development charges, ward boundaries, aggregate resources, and uh, a host of other matters. 
its decisions are final and can only be appealed, as was said, on points of law. Uh, the OMB's role has been controversial all along for a number of reasons. Its undemocratic ability to override elected municipal councils, substituting its own decisions for municipal ones, the uneven quality of appointments, an increasingly pro-development bias, its inherent inaccessibility, it costs an enormous amount of money to muster the expertise, time, effort to appear before the OMB. Communities are at an enormous disadvantage. And in 1996, the Planning Act um, made a change which allows developers to initiate appeals within 90 days, which severely limits the ability of municipal 